Welcome to Everyday Linux User. Today I'm going to show you how to download and install Fedora, uh, but we're going to do it dual boot over two drives. So to start off with, we need to go and get Fedora. So open our web browser and in the address bar type fedoraproject.org. And you can see the latest release is 38. Uh, it's quite a sparse looking website. Uh, Fedora Linux is one of the grandfathers of Linux, uh, originally based off Red Hat Linux. Um, it is a solid desktop operating system. Um, today we're going to show you how to install it. Uh, so there's various versions available. There's a workstation, which is the one we'll be installing. Uh, there's a server, a community server, um, Internet of Things, a cloud version. And that's one for another day. And then we've got the core OS. Um, which is a uh, container-optimized version of the operating system. Another one for another day. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is click on the download link, and then you'll see here there's various options. You can go for the live um, ISO. Uh, if we do that fashion, then we can use uh, Bellina Etcher to, in, to create a USB drive. Uh, there's the ARM versions. These are for um, Raspberry Pi and then PowerPC version. What I'm going to try is the Fedora Media Writer. So I'm going to click on the Windows version here. And you see that's downloaded in the bottom left hand corner. Now that's finished, we're going to uh, double click on the XE. It is worth noting you're going to need an empty USB drive or one where you don't mind the data being overwritten. So if you've got that, put that into your drive now. And I'd recommend a USB drive of four gigabytes or more on it. So click I agree at the uh, license agreement and then click install. Note that there are versions for Windows, Mac and Linux. So this tool is available for most systems. Now we're going to minimize this and uh, click next. And then it will ask you whether you want to run Fedora Media Writer now. If you don't run it now, then you can click on the start button and you can start typing Fedora here. And you can see it will appear here. So you can run it either from here or you can have it launch automatically. So click finish. So you can choose to download automatically, um, select an ISO file or store. Um, so I'm going to choose download automatically because I haven't got an ISO file. So click next. And they've got various versions you can choose. You've got the official versions, um, which are the ones we discussed earlier. So we've got workstation, Internet of Things, or server. Emerging editions, I'm not sure what they are. So silver, blue, and Kinoit. I assume that's how you spell that, uh, say that. And they've got various spins. Uh, so KDE, um, all the different desktop environments available. And then... Um, lab versions. So you've got a Fedora Games Edition. So Fedora's um, got lots of different options available. So I'm going to go for an official edition and I'm going to go for Fedora Workstation. I'm going to click Next. Uh, you can choose which version you want. I want the latest, so 38 in my case. Um, my hardware. Uh, now I'm going to install onto this PC and another PC. They're both Intel and uh, so I'm going to choose the 64-bit version, and the drive I'm going to write to is this USB drive here. It's 8 gigabyte, uh, and then you can choose whether to delete the download after writing, um, which you might want to do um, to clear up disk space on your drive. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just click download and write, and you'll see that um, Fedora will start downloading. It's interesting, out of all the distributions that I've reviewed um, thus far and done installation guides for, this is the first one that's got its own official um, installer uh, to create the USB drive in the first place. All the others suggest using other tools like uh, uh, Win32 Media Writer or um, Bellina Etcher or some other tool. Uh, but Fedora has got their own tool for creating the USB drive. Whilst that's doing that, what we're going to do is sort our disks out. So press the Windows key, uh, type in DISC MGMT, and that says create and format hard disk partitions up here. So we click on that. 
and you can see I've got a two disc system now. Uh, this disc here is obviously my USB drive. Uh, disc zero is my main hard drive. Uh, disc one is an external. Uh, is another internal hard drive. Now it's worth pointing out if you're going to do this over two discs, it'd be beneficial if both of them were SSDs. In my case, only disc zero is an SSD. Disc one is a 2.5 inch um, hard drive. So it's just a standard hard drive. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to delete all the partitions that are there so that I've got a completely empty disk. And there you go, I've got completely unallocated space now so I can install Fedora to this drive. So if I want to do a dual boot on a single drive, what I do is I take this Windows C drive, I right click, I do shrink volume. Uh, and generally you want a bit more space available. Um, I've got, um, I haven't got enough space to actually shrink it so that's why I'm doing it over a tool, uh, two disk system. Uh, I can manipulate my file system around to give myself more space, but I'm not going to do that. I'm doing it over two disks. But what you would do is you'd hit shrink here, and that would leave you a section of unallocated space down the middle. So you'd have unallocated, unallocated space there. So when you're installing Fedora, you would choose that unallocated space as where to install it to. Uh, I have another guide that I'm going to link to this video that shows you how to do a single um, boot, uh, dual boot system, but this is on a two drive dual boot that will be doing this one. So we're actually in a healthy place to do the dual boot now. Um, I can close this window. Uh, Fedora is almost done. It's just checking the download. And so the download is now complete. It's now writing the image to the USB drive. As you can see, uh, the writing process is coming along nicely, We're about halfway through now. It does take um, about 15 minutes to do so you can go and do something else um, and then come back to it uh, a bit later on and as you can see we're now coming to the end of the um, white process once the data has been written to the drive um, there's a check part that then checks that the the ISO has been written to the drive correctly this doesn't take quite so long um, but it still takes a few minutes Finally, uh, once the uh, check is finished, you'll see this message, Fedora Workstation successfully written, and whatever version number it is, and uh, you can restart and boot from your chosen drive. So at this point, if you're installing to a new machine, you would take the USB drive out and put it into the machine you put, uh, that you're putting Fedora onto. And in this case, I'm dual booting, so I'm going to leave the USB drive in uh, the computer, I'm going to click finish, and then I'm going to restart the computer. And uh, you can close this window now. So we're going to reboot the computer. And we're going to press the F7 key, or whatever key it is that brings up your boot menu. And you'll see the words entering boot menu. And then you're going to choose the USB drive. So in this case, the Sand Cruiser, the Sand Disk Cruiser. And then you can Select the Start Fedora Workstation Live 38, and it should now boot into Fedora Live Image, which is what you will use to install Fedora. So I'm going to have to record this entire video using my phone on a tripod because um, Fedora uses Wayland, and the screen recorders for Wayland are sadly lacking. So here we are, um, we're at the uh, Fedora opening screen and the button we're going to click is install Fedora. And we're now at the uh, installation um, screen. So uh, first off you choose uh, your language, um, so in my case English and it's worked out I'm already in the United Kingdom. So just click continue and then uh, unlike other distributions the installation isn't linear so um, 
first off you can choose your localization settings then you choose your system options so we're going to choose keyboard layout um, I've already got English as my keyboard layout um, so uh, this is not the best installer in the world by any means so I've if you want to add a different one in you can click the plus symbol down here and then you choose the language you want to choose uh, and you can remove the one that's there and you can test the keyboard layout. So if I click on English over here, I should be able to test that layout. Um, but once you're done, you click done in the top left corner, uh, and then time and date, um, a map appears and you can choose where you are on the map. Uh, so, or you can actually search for it in a list of places like this and then click done. And then we're on to the installation destination. So uh, you can see I've got my um, two drives here. I've got my um, SSD and I've got the hard drive that I'm actually going to install to. So I'm going to click on that. So I'm going to select automatic and click done. Uh, now I'm going to click on begin installation. Now it's going to start installing the software. As you can see, the files have been installed, software has been installed, and uh, now it's installing the bootloader. It's now doing uh, other parts of the installation. You can actually go and get a drink and uh, go and do something else for about 25 minutes, I think it is, uh, for this installation to complete. It'll probably be quick, quicker on an SSD. I'm doing it to a mechanical hard drive, so it's um, obviously going to be a bit slower and then it says complete um, so we've finished the installation so the moment of proof is to reboot your computer and take out the USB drive and see what happens when you boot in the first time it will probably still boot into Windows what you need to do is press the relevant function key to enter your UEFI uh, BIOS settings so in my case, it's the escape key. Um, you can Google for your manufacturer. You can see it's entering setup. And if I go over to the boot options here, um, you'll see down at the bottom, I have UFE hard disk drive BBS priorities. And if I click here, you can see option one is Windows and option two is Fedora. So what I want to do is switch those around. I'm gonna put Fedora there. And you can see Windows now becomes option two. And then I can click uh, press, uh, you'll see down in the right hand side, there's an F4 key, um, which says save and exit. So we're going to do that and then save configuration and exit. And you'll see now I've got an option for Fedora, um, a rescue option, Windows and UFE. So let's try Windows first, make sure that works. <laughs> and as you can see it does. Uh, so that's fine. So now we'll restart. And now I shouldn't have to enter the BIOS again. It should just automatically come up with the Fedora menu and I should be able to choose Fedora as the option. And it does. So now I can click on Fedora. And you can see the Fedora logo is loaded in the bottom. So here we are, we're in Fedora. And we're at the setup. Uh, all we have to do is click start setup. You can choose um, whether to connect to internet or not. I'm connected to a wired internet, so I don't need to do this. But you just choose your Wi-Fi connection and then enter the Wi-Fi password and you'd be connected. You can skip that if you're already on a wired connection like I am. Uh, you can choose whether to have location services on or off. Uh, these are on by default. I've turned them off all automatically. Um, and then click next and you can choose whether to enable third party repositories I've enabled them so this is the default state it comes in so click enable click next and uh, then you can choose online accounts um, whether Gmail or uh, Office 365 etc click skip for that and then you can create a username so I've created a username called Gary click next and then you set a password um, I've typed in a uh, password. Uh, the reason you're seeing this and it's all filled in is because I accidentally didn't 
press the record on the video when I did it the first time. So I'm having to go through it again, but essentially just type in your password and repeat it here. Then click next. And all done, and you can start using Fedora Linux. Uh, you've got a choice now whether to take the GNOME 44 tour. Uh, Fedora is cutting edge, so you get the latest of each application. Um, so GNOME's quite a high version number. I'm going to click no thanks to that. And you can see you've got workspaces here, and as soon as you click on that, you get the workspace, but your little menu at the bottom disappears. If I click activities, you now get the the toolbar appearing uh, but we'll go through that in the full review I'm going to do the full review using a virtual machine um, because that way I can get a screen recorder working for that and that's the end of the video if you like the video give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more content from everyday Linux user thank you for watching